Hello, this is Polo and Bryson, and we are here to talk you through our track, Abandon. Which is out now on the Pacific EP on Shogun Audio. Right, so this is Abandon, this is the project. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to start um, <clears throat> from the start of the track, talk through all the um, all the sounds as they come in, um, and then just talk to you a little bit about the process of making the sounds and how we've processed them, what sort of plugins and things we've used, and also what software, because a lot of the things might seem a little bit unfamiliar to a lot of people because we use Reason. Um, so we're using Reason 10. So there's a few bits and pieces here and there which you can only get in Reason. But as of Reason 11, it's now a plugin. So I think actually you could you could theoretically get access to all of these things on any DAW. Yeah. Um, and also we're going to talk about the drums uh, we'll go in depth with the drums, but we'll we'll do that uh, towards the end of the end of the video. Right, so we'll play up until maybe maybe play the first sort of eight bars and play eight, the first eight bars, bars, and then we'll sort of go walk through what is in each section and how we yeah created it. Right, let's go. <laughs> So right. in that first sixteen, we had we had a couple of things there. It didn't sound like there was a lot, but there was the strings. There's, we've got the strings. We've got some atmospheres. We've got um, intro arp here. We've got uh, some pads here. Um, there's more little arp sounds coming in. Some little piano trills. Um, so it's essentially layering. I mean, the the primary thing that I think that grabs a lot of att people's attention in that intro is the strings. That's the thing that carries the sort of melody. Yeah. And the strings aren't just on their own. They are layered with that pad. Yeah. Um, the, the corded... So we'll start with the strings, all right? Yeah. So the strings... These were made using labs, yeah. String work. Oh, string work. String even. work. This is a propeller head instrument. Um, I think you might be able to get it as a, as a VST e as well. E-instruments. I'm not. I think it might just be a rack extension, but you might be able to get it as a as a uh, standalone VST. VST yeah, <laughs> possibly worth googling. But anyways, yeah, we put punch these chords in. And to start off, it doesn't play the full progression. It only plays the full progression until it gets to the, uh, the second half of that second half. bars. Yeah, but it, they're layered um, with the piano with a pad underneath. Um, which those chords progressively get sort of bigger, uh, wider, yeah, I think more fuller. Similar, I think they might be the same chords as the strings, to be honest. But um, yeah, as the strings progress, we add more layers and lay on top, so it just kind of builds it up. Um, and then when it reaches this point here, um, it kind of comes all crashing back down again for a little kind of. We like doing these sort of building the track up and then dropping it down just before the drop sort of thing to have another little breakdown in section. Um, a nice hands in the air moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Euphoria. Uh, but this smooth smooth piano pad. Uh, this was bounced, wasn't it? This is bounced. So this is the original sound. I think this is made... Okay, this, this is made using a few of the... Um, I think this is actually a combinator patch that comes with reason. To it be is, yeah, yeah. I think we might have changed a few things it's here. Definitely not one of ours. We turned down the piano and just kept the strings on it. Um, and then once once we, I think once we did the chords, we bounced it out, so it sounds like this. It's a smooth pad. And so when the when the chord changes are happening, you don't get that release, as you would here. So it's just a snappier, a snappier change. So it doesn't kind of get in the way 
too much of the other sounds. And it also sounds a little bit more kind of robotic, which I kind of like. We kind of liked that, uh, the way that the chords changed there. And then we added some filter just to filter it, a low pass filter just to filter it back up. We're not a fan of um, volume fades. We prefer filtered sort of LFOs. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, low pass filters and high pass filter fades. They feel they it all of a sudden it feels a little bit more subtle. Yeah. And in this eight bar section here, this is where we've got the arpeggio, uh, the intro arpeggio sort of come in. And it's another element that's layered in over these chords to sort of add a more, I don't know, more like sonic depth yeah, I think and from width. The, from the very start, we've got this arp here. The arp should be together, by the way. Let me just. It might be easier. There we go. Uh, we've got this up, which has a level automation, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this, this is made using addictive keys. Um, the bottom chords presetting, and I think we might have played around with a few of the. the you can play around with the the mic positions and different types of mics and stuff, and it's it's really really good, um, really good software. And we use this for most of our pianos and uh, road sounds as well, which even, we'll go into a bit into that later as well. Even things like pads as well. Even things like pads. So yeah, this is just an ARP sound. It doesn't really sound. You can't really. It's on. I think the electric piano one. Yeah, so it doesn't really sound um, organic as such, but. It just got a really nice texture to it. It's weird. It sounds very like, um, it's like eighties, yeah, eighties electro with that like over over that kind of eighties arp type thing. Yeah, overused reverb sort of on the electric pianos. It's very um, Stranger Things at the moment. Let's see if it's got any. Yeah, that's literally it. So we've got that building up, and then we've got another arp that comes in a little bit. On the after the first eight bars, and what was this made using? Aha, Nostromo Spectral Synthesizer. This one is a rack extension in Reason. Um, I don't think you can get this one as a VST, but it is really, really good. It's really organic sound. You've got loads of different um, sort of waves that you can use. And I mean, it's bloody, it's complicated to use. But I was going to say just, this one always it still <laughs> scares me just looking at it. Once you just <laughs> fiddle about with the things, like we obviously put in a preset, but then we just you know you just experiment and then come up with some wacky sounds. But it is really good. Yeah, whenever we get our hands on a new synth, it's essentially just like going through presets, finding things you like the sound of, and then fiddling around with them to make them your own. Yeah. And it gives you that kind of like that that basis to start with. I think on this one, it's got a pan automation. We've got filter automation and then reverb automation. So it pans slowly from left to right, or just in a wacky way. I think we just recorded that in. With automating things, it's always it's always good to have uh, some essence of automation in a lot of the sounds you do, like whether that's like your velocity or your filter frequency or your panning. Yeah. Um, or the reverb and mount or decay because it just makes the sound sound more organic even though it's it, it, it's entirely cr been created in a computer yeah automation is crucial yeah and we've done a lot of this in this track just yeah, and it really helps transitions and everything like that so you know you can get some really unique textures from it it can take a sound and actually make it sound uh, it, it takes it to that sort of that next level doesn't it really yeah in interestingness, which is not a word. <laughs> so yeah, that, that coupled with the the other ARP and the rest of the strings and the pad. I think what else have we got in there? There's a couple of like little um, sound hits, like little uh, heavy, like re heavy reverberated hits and and swells and things like that. But it's essentially the the, the real sort of um, structure of the track does begin at around 32 bars, yep. which is where we. Uh, which we'll, we'll play for you now, actually, I think. Well, I just quickly, oh, the trills, there's a yes, few little bits, on. like there's a few little guitar 
bits that we've sampled. I think that might have just been from Splice or something, but... Um, oh yeah, reverse it, ton of reverb. Ton of reverb. Little bits here and there, they're always nice. And panning, panning is very important, I think. Mm -hmm. You can get so much more width in your mix just by using little bits of pans here and there. There's a bit of panning here and there, sorry. Little pans. Pots and pans. Another guitar hit. Um, and then these atmospheres that come in. So this was made using grain, and then we've bounced this out. It's a shame we don't have the original, because what we tend to do is we put a sound in, um, like record an arpeggio on the piano or something, put it through a grain, and then um, bounce it out. And then we get rid of the original sound quite often. So, but we can just should we do a little demonstration? We can show off what grain can do because it is it's a tool that we it's changed massively how we've written music. So say um, I've got an instance of addictive keys. I'll just play in some. Well, I'll just I'll draw I'll just draw in some piano notes here. Yeah. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> That'll do for now. A uh, bit of reverb. I like to use the RV 7000 still. It's very good reverb. That's a reason. Reason exclusive. But reverb. we do quite often use um, the Fab Filter stuff. We got Fab Filter reverb. Yeah, Pro R there is, and like is that's our alternative go to. So what we'll do here is then bounce in place. And then bounce to new sample. Delete that. This is what we do. <laughs> open Give me a up, quick 60 second explanation. Open up an instance of grain, which you can get other um, granulous, uh, granulous samplers. Yeah. But grain is our uh, <laughs> other granular synthesizers are available. Ah, uh, here it is. There right. it is. God damn it. <clears throat> so, here's what the grain can do. At the moment, it just sounds like a normal sampler. So, for instance, you move your playhead to a certain point over the waveform. Yeah. And essentially, what it does this. is it, it, it continuously loops a certain segment of that wave or that sound wave based on where the playhead is. So yeah, you can move it around and it'll create some really nice textures, move all this stuff about. All this stuff. All this stuff about. <laughs> I'm very technical. Um, no, that's just basically the spread and then the grain length of each, because um, it splits it into little tiny waveforms and then you can change the lengths of them and how much of them are, how much waves are there. How much waves are How there? many waves? God, what's wrong with me today? And then you automate all this stuff, and then you recreate some really. And then you cool add more reverb onto it, and then you can resample it and put it back into grain. And it's it's a never ending loop essentially, but it's it's one way that in in sixty seconds with using something like a granular synthesizer, you can create a unique pad that is yours, no one else has. And what you, we tend to do is we 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 spend. Uh, we'll spend a day maybe if we we're not up for writing a song. We'll spend a day here and there just writing atmospheres and writing um, pads and yeah. soundscapes and stuff like that. Which comes in handy on the days where you've got nothing but ideas and you don't want to spend forty minutes writing a bunch exactly. of atmospheres. You can just yeah. drag and drop things you've already created. Yeah, go full Blue Peter mode. Here's one we made earlier. <laughs> so yeah, that's made using grain. And we've got another one. These are all using grain. And now that you've seen how the process works, it makes sense when listening back to these sounds soloed, you can kind of hear exactly what we did and how we did it. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense. Right, and then we'll move on to 
the next 16 bars. Right, so in there we have more developed uh, atmospheres here. Yeah, there's the the ones from the grain synthesizer uh, sort of being strung out a little bit. Uh, we have the roads. We have this piano melody. Um, One of the arpeggios piano. that we previously mentioned as well is tailing off into this section as well. We've taken out some of the sounds from the from the intro, so we've taken out the strings. We've taken out the pads uh, because we wanted to bring it back down into the roads so it doesn't clash and also to kind of give it a more um kind give of it a more, sort of more feel yeah do you know what i mean and you also give the roads a little bit more of like a sort of center stage yeah in the mix we've got a little vocal sample um we've got some more synthesized chords here there's this the and weird pulsing we'll get to percussion layer uh, synth in the intro as well, like the yeah, the one, 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 this one here, that one, next one. I'm not gonna sing it. And if you've watched um, our production tutorial from last year where we broke down our You'll track, see that we haven't learned any <laughs> lessons, <laughs> we're still <laughs> hand drawing the most ridiculously over the unnecessarily complicated well, the thing automation is, patterns. The thing is you just can't really get the same effects using an LFO or no anything like that. You can't get the same con amount of control. And What you just, could always do just is you could of, have a MIDI controller that's got faders and dials on it just and always more, record it in, but Harry doesn't want to do no. that. <laughs> well, funny you say that because I did actually record this in using the mouse and one of the parameters. And then obviously just went in in depth and just fixed all the problems. Um, this one, this thing's called Tectonic. I think we got it for about eight pounds online. It's really good. Um, it's just one of them lucky finds, I guess. Yeah, this is one that I think is is available um, regardless of what DAW you use. Yeah, I think so. As far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, we've got the chords here. They're the same as the, the roads. We'll get into the roads in a bit. Um, and just this is just automation on the filter. It just gives it really nice. I think it's got a pan as well, pan automation. Yes, it does. Yeah. It sounds a bit weird on its own, but with the rest, with everything else, it sounds pretty cool. I think we just wanted to give that feel of it like floating around your head with everything else mainly centered as well. Yeah, and it, it kind of you see that it follows the same chord uh, pattern as the roads and, and it definitely kind of adds a little bit more like um how would you say like a little bit more like oomph behind the sort of the yeah the start and the triggering of just, each roads chord it just fills in the space as well yeah and just gives it some solid that's the one thing that's always been it's always quite hard with roads pianos in in drum and bass as well like if you've got like atmospheres and pads and things like that and strings yeah it's very hard to get a roads to sound so prominent in a mix to sit in the mix yeah. well yeah um whereas if you have something like this it can it, 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 it can, assists so the, the roads, roads with kind of leading that rhythm yeah i think the roads is completely mono so this has the space to mm. fill out the the sides and then also i think we've got these chords 
which this sounds like an electric piano on addictive keys. This no, is it's a legend. legend. This is a legend. Another synth uh, that I bought from the Propeller Head site. I think you can get this as a VST as well. Um, it's really good. It's very analog sounding. Um, but I think we literally just had this to kind of back up the roads to sort of beef it, beef them up a little bit. Having said that, the roads are stereo. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. And then the next sort of primary element that that as assists the roads and stuff in this breakdown is the is the piano chords is the piano that come in the really bright the um the melody yeah so the melody um was originally a more pr prominent part of this track i think it went on it was more r repetitive i think we changed it over time and this was used using addictive keys once again um, upright tunes, yeah. Upright piano it sounds great, especially when I you're going kind of going through the like the more sort of like quite hard hitting piano sound. Yeah, you're going for them more like sharp stabby chords, organic. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, this is the melody. Kind of has like a Latiny, Latiny feel. Yeah, which I really and like. You pair it with the. Uh, with the lower, the lower notes. Yeah, so I think we bounced it and pitched, and pitched it down. It down I think and you could. That's how you get that really unique sound. Use the pro out here as well. With hell of a lot of uh, <laughs> space. I think it's fair to say that when we're going for kind of more like subtle reverb, the R RV7000 is our go-to. But when we're going for like real spacious, like Yeah, huge... reverb that you want to be able to hear as opposed to just being there to kind of... Stylistically, fill yeah. Fill in the space. The RV, um, sorry, the Pro, Pro R is really, really good. Yeah. yeah. It genuinely it sounds like you're in the inside of a cathedral. Or... <laughs> in space. <laughs> What have we got here? We've got some more textures. It's a nice little hit there. No idea how that was made. It's probably a sample. Yep, yeah, that's a sample. Um, what we tend to do is whack a lot of sounds in our tracks and then we'll go through the process of just getting rid of them bit by bit. Yeah, we, we go overkill and then strip things back. Yeah. Um, it's a little violin. These violins, I think, were one of them's pitched down five here, yeah, and then they were panned left and right. But these, these are these are featured throughout the track. They just tie in transitions really nicely. Um, just one of those little transitional effects that we like to use quite often. Um, so yeah, there's that's most of it. The roads. The roads is using addictive keys once again, and the Mark One stage piano is bloody amazing. Um. We've got low pass frequency, high pass frequency, and uh, just a normal filter frequency automation on this. So as it as it gets towards the drop, it will sort of starts to get dragged back down a bit, get kind of a bit the low ends come out, squeezed and yeah, soft, and it just gets slowly dissolved. Dissolved. I like that. <laughs> Uh, so and that takes us all up, all the way up to the drop. All the way so, up to um, the drop. I think that's the next section that we're going to go over.
Right, so... Um, Surprising, when, once you take the drums out, there's, there's not a lot going on. There's not a massive amount. Yeah, there's not. But I think um, in this case, because we, we built up the drop step by step, so there's more sounds added. Yeah, progressively things come in sort of each 16, 32 yeah. bar section. So you we, heard those pianos return as well. We tend to like doing that on the drop, especially like just bringing it really stripped back on the actual drop itself. Because uh, especially in this case, it's, it's um, a case of less is more. Yeah. Um, sometimes not. If you're going for like a liquid roller or like a big uplifting liquid tune. Then yeah, you kind of want to have more elements come back in on the drop, things like that for yeah. different styles. But in this case, it, it worked best kind of having... Essentially on the drop, nothing really but um, the synths and a, the bass. Yeah, a synth that was mimicking the chords from previously, or just like the first two um, bars of the chord structure, and then a bass line. Yeah, and what we've done with the chords here, um, we've taken like it was in the intro, um, just the two, the two chords from the from the start of the progression, and rather than carrying on the progression, just keep it like that. And what that does, I think, it just kind of creates this tension. Yeah, 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 because it's like looping. You're expecting it to carry on You're with the melody. expecting it, it to resolve, yeah. but it never does. I think it does towards the end. Yeah, at the, at the, very at the end of each four-bar section. Uh, and this synth was made using Tal, which... Um, this was a, a synth that Makoto showed us um, Yeah. when we were working on a track with him for his album. Yeah. Um, yeah, he showed it to us, and yeah, we haven't been able to put like stop using it since. Really, it's been it's featured really, heavily on our album as well. It's a really good synth. It's kind of like a a, a Juno emulator. Yeah, type thing. You can see that visually as well in the plugin as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's quite a simple plugin. Um, mm. You do have to play around with it a fair bit um, to get a really good sound, but it's so worth it. And it's only like did you say? 20 it's like twenty quid. quid. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and cheap. Yeah, it's really good that. Um, we use it a lot and um, I guess it's got a really warm warm character to it yeah and one thing that like throughout throughout a track if you've got a reoccurring theme something like a chord progression so this chord progression features quite heavily throughout this tune in different places yeah the one way you can really keep a track interesting is without it also means that that reoccurring theme is there without people even really noticing it is by having different you could have it all played constantly on synths, but you have a different synth that sounds slightly different to the last one playing it in each 16 bar section. Yeah. So in this instance, it is another synth, um, still a synth, but it's a different synth and it has a different tone to it and it's, it sounds warmer, yeah. works better with the bass as well. And it allows you to kind of keep reusing like a chord progression throughout a track or a certain theme or like a little motif or a little riff. And as this um, progresses on to the... Um to the next 16 it kind of builds up and we've got some distortion on it uh, using this pulverizer which is great we use it in everything it just adds a really nice hot crisp on the top mm. yeah without it it's it sounds kind of flat too clean yeah too clean yeah. we don't like clean with it it just kind of adds that body um body to the sound and then and a nice crisp on top a bit of saturation yeah um so yeah let's check out some of the other things so we've got um there's like the re uh not reoccurring yeah reoccurring reoccurring arpeggios that come back in as well from the synth they come back in the on the next 16 don't they yeah, yeah. And we've and got obviously we've got the uh returning pianos as well the pianos with an added piano layer so I know it says low bounce there, but it's high. <laughs> um, just another like with that. Gives it a really full sound. And taking things like that and like layering the lower octave, higher octaves um, in sounds like a piano, and then obviously just adjusting the levels can really help sort of increase the stereo width yeah add more character to the sound as well because obviously there's more frequencies floating around yeah and this it just adds a really nice like toppy brightness to the mm. uh what else we got we got this we've got the atmospheres coming back again it's good this is another atmosphere what we like to do is take maybe a bit from this one and then um 
find uh, a different section of it, reverse find, it, and find a section of it, and then just repeat it. So it's like a drone, and it just kind of sits nicely over the top of the rest of the track. You know, you will, ideally with this as well, you want to kind of find a section within that pad or atmosphere that's got a bit of natural movement to it already. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just it. It's just yeah. Yeah, you want like an organic Static. drone. It, it's got some movement and and variation to it. All right. Um, so yeah, this is a nice little transitional effect. And we've got some crashes and stuff. Um, standard crashes, standard little hits that we had in the intro as well. Little vocal hits. Which are nice. And again, that's all transition, transition stuff. Yeah, because if I mean throughout a track, personally, no, you should never transition from one four or eight bar section to the next without having some sort of like yeah uh, to help it get there. Yeah, yeah, like you have like a transitional like <coughs> sort of whooshing effect, or a, or you do sort of recreate what you would make with a whooshing effect, but you do that with a vocal or with a string sample or something like that kind of helps bridge the gaps between the sort of uh, more form formulaic, boring chunks of a track. Yeah. And we've got these uh, little verb hits going. Yeah, because like, we had these in the intro as well, didn't we? Track. don't know really how we chose the placement of them. I think we just experimented. <laughs> <laughs> we just experimented lots with um, putting them in different places and yeah. seeing, seeing where they fit. Because we knew they sounded nice, but we just needed to find the, the right place for them. That sometimes can be quite challenging but um is that everything in this oh no there's the bass the bass of the course the bass of course the yeah. bass right let's uh let's solo this because there's, there's quite a few layers to it actually so the bass it's made up of these layers so we've got Reese bass stabs bass tops uh let's start start with a sub Standard sub movers. A lot of movement in it. Recorded though. that on the piano and then. But then I think we, it originally just started with sub and then we knew it, it just kind of needed a little bit more grit. More grit to it. So we. Beef. Got this Reese. And then to finish that phrase off, we, we made another uh, like stabby type sound. Which like rolls down, and a lot of the time when when not necessarily in this instance, but when you're making a bass and you want to have slight variation and things like that in there, you you don't want to create a whole new sound or just use exactly the same one. Yeah, you duplicate the first instance of that that bass instrument or synth or whatever it is you're using, and for the second section where you want to have that variation, you then alter, and you you add just you add things to that original patch so you have like two sounds that have come from the same sample or from the same synth yeah. and they sound very different but when you gel them all together it almost flows like seamlessly. perfectly from yeah seamlessly yeah. from one to the other so that and then the sub is doing um all the notation of course it just sits underneath nicely just gel it all together and then we've got some automation on uh, the pull horizon which um Gets that really nice distortion on the top. Filter automation on the bass, so it kind of slowly. I think, I think again, this is hand drawn <laughs> boutique um, automation lanes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it this is uh, it just slowly kind of evolves to the, towards the end of the progression. And the sub, it's worth noting. Um, this is where it gets kind of like 8080 and stabby, in it? Yeah. Because I really like it when, because sometimes you can just have a really flat sub and it just stays on that note and then yeah. moves different notes. But if you put a little bit of rhythm into it, it makes the track move so much better. It's not really something you notice, um, but it, it really does help. Yeah, absolutely. Keep that movement well, because otherwise it, it it just feels a bit lagging at times. And yeah. I mean, um, it's not like drum and bass doesn't have some bloody energetic drums already. 
And yeah, there's but a lot if you've of got an in there, energetic you, drums, you, you need to have an energetic bass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well. you don't just want yeah. like flat, long held notes. Yeah. Another thing, another good thing, like having rhythm and kind of re triggering the notes um, instead of just having a long held one's good, but also having kind of like slight pauses and gaps between each yeah, note. Yeah, of course. Is yeah. another, another good then, tip for. You've got to just make sure that. Um, let's have a look at the sub. That the decay and the sustain are not f- not maxed whacked. out basically, oh, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, you won't hear you any won't, difference yeah. in the rhythm, like when the notes re trigger. You'll hear a pop, that might be it. Yeah. yeah, and you want to obviously adjust like, either the amp or the filter envelope. Most likely, it would be the amp envelope. I think actually, this we've got some automation on the decay as well. So that, um, as you can see here, the decay is shorter on the first bit so it's a little bit more stabby and then for the roll down it's a bit more elongated yeah it's like a question and answer baseline call and response call and response it's variation yeah that's the key to it it's never having no two bar section should be the same all the way through and then we've got oh this isn't doing anything okay um right we'll move on to the next Next, uh, 16. So, then after that section, we've got more layers added in. Uh, let's just play it. So yeah, um, we've got the the main synth flowing back through uh, a little bit more added in the fi- in the in the filter. Uh, then we've got an ARP. We've added an ARP, and I really really like this sound. An ARP. Um, an ARP. This comes from again the Tal. Um, it's got an ARP agitator on it. Um, very short decay. And then have we got any? We've got parallel, just parallel reverb. Um, so look here. Bit of mid side EQ. You want to sometimes you want to get this rid of the sides and the low, lower frequencies so that it, it doesn't clash with um, like the simps or the roads, etc. In the stereo in the stereo field, uh, and then maybe boost the mids mid range so that sits nicely in the mix. And then we've got a stereo imager here to mono the low end. Um, this is really good because it splits it into two. You can, I mean, That's it's quite a low low end as well though. Essentially, where that it's a over. really simple um, mid side thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just to make sure that the anything below this point here. Uh, just to make sure that it it doesn't interfere with the with the left and the right channels. Yeah, you don't want clashing frequencies in no. the sort of in the wide elements of your stereo field. Well, you don't really want clashing frequencies anywhere, but and then a little bit of boost in uh, of width in the top in the top end of this arp. <laughs> And again, that's literally just copying and pasting the the chords into that synth. Running theme. So we've got more atmospheres building up there. We've taken out this one. Um, no, taken out and adding different elements on top is yeah. always a good, good trick. Um, rather than just building on elements, just keep building, building, and building. If you do that, it will end up sounding quite muddy eventually. So you've got to take out something. As you add something in, it's worth maybe looking at taking taking a certain sound out. And also, not only does it sound muddy as well, it then gets to the point where sort of after a thirty-two bar section, every element within the tune has been used up. 
um, one one element could have been playing non-stop for the last minute. That that aspect of the track kind of becomes boring from a con- sort of composition standpoint. Yeah. So you want to kind of you want to keep keep it fresh, and even if you're using the same chords, yeah, move from one synth to a different one. Kind of each sixteen bar section keeps it keeps it just kind of relatively interesting, like audibly. Yeah. Audibly interesting. Audibly interesting. We got this pad coming back in here. The same pad as that was in the intro. Yeah, it's worth looking at bringing back uh, elements that are, that you put in the intro as well. Then we've got this little staccato piano sounds, which is using labs, which is what we spoke about earlier on. This is another great. Th- this is free. This All is the free. Spitfire yeah. audio lab stuff is free. And this is really nice sounding piano. It's like very cinematic, uh, very soft felt like piano sound. Um, and with the labs plugin, I think it comes with other just, stuff as well. It comes with like strings and all sorts of things like that as well. Yeah, often well, here we split. This is to make it a little bit wider. This split stereo thing that is a waves plugin. So yeah. Um, Let's think. Is there any more to add about that? We've taken uh, at this point because there's so much more progress things going on in terms of the synths and stuff. We've taken out the bass, the sort of more distorted bass, um, and it's just sub. It gives the track a whole different feel. In so, yeah, exactly. It it takes it kind of more from like a hard hitting, quite punchy drop to a little bit more of a kind of like rolling, vibey sort of. Yeah. Uh, and it, it makes sense to do that at this point in the track because, that, like Harry said, there's more musical elements kind of returning to yeah. and joining the, the, the sort of the... Joining the party. Joining the party. So time for the uh, heavy, gritty, uh, late late evening bass to uh, take a back seat. <laughs> just just for 16 bars. Yeah, get drums back in. Right, breakdown. Let's talk about this. Um, I mean, the breakdown is essentially very similar to what the intro is in this track. Um, It's more just reusing certain elements that are somewhat different to what you did in the intro. Yeah. Got this arp coming back in. I noticed that we we do use a lot of automation, especially in this track, um, just to kind of evolve sounds a little bit more so it's not just a static sound playing from one section to another it just kind of um gives it that movement at this point we change up um the kind of style of chords they're a little bit more slower uh it um it's like a whole new chord progression i guess We've got the strings back in. And then it's a it's the same chord progression, but the um It's essentially half time, isn't it? It's sort of like stretched out yeah. to be half the speed. That's right. And it changes the dynamic entirely. You can do you can you can do this a lot in a track where uh, what you've used in the drop, um, where it's high energy um, a lot of movement and you want it to be kind of like have that sort of fast paced energy about it Yeah. in the breakdown where you want it to be the complete opposite you want it to be quite melancholy and relaxed then you can take that same chord structure and stretch it out slow it down or reduce the number of sort of triggers with that synth or that those piano notes and sort of break it up slow it down and it helps sort of recreate even again using the same associated theme that you've heard throughout the track it sounds entirely fresh and new but there's that subconscious association with what you've heard for the last minute and a half yep and this um is a little bit there's there's more um sort of stab stabby elements going on there whereas here it's just So it's building the synth up to be something different. Uh, and it, it just gives it a little bit more variety in that section of the yeah. track. 
And um, so that's the breakdown. The breakdown's pretty simple. We've got the the melody coming back in. We've got more. Got all the atmospheres in full whack there. A lot of people do. And we 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 we've decided here to just completely scrap the roads. And just say the roads is only ever in the yeah we did yeah we the did, first yeah. breakdown because they were initially in there weren't they because I think what we, what we liked about this track was how every section is has its own kind of different feel or different vibe mm. um, and it just builds like that for the whole track no no section is the same so but yeah really like that about this particular project I think we'll be doing more of that definitely. Um, Drums, we'll get into the drums, um, yeah. but just quickly, I'll, I'll play the second drop and you can see how much it, how much it has changed since the first drop. So yeah, using all the same sounds that we were using, but just changing everything about them, the notation, sometimes the... Structuring, the ordering in which things come in and come out. Yeah. All of a sudden, it just sounds less punchy and aggressive and more kind of like relaxed and actually quite rolling and, and yeah. more liquidy as opposed to quite gritty. It's just deeper. Yeah. And, the, and again, the progression is not just on two notes, uh, two, sorry, two chords in a two-bar loop. It's... Um, it's now like two chords in a four bar loop. Yeah. Um, right, let's get on to the drums. So I think we usually just start building the drums um, from the drop. Um, I don't think we ever really start with no. intro drums. We it's only, more you kind of, you start. We only get that from. We build up all our layers and then we kind of take the layers that we think best suit working in the yeah. intro. We bring them into the intro and incorporate them in there. Drums we spend a very, very long time on. Uh, and in some cases we will spend a day on drums and then like we do with atmospheres and then just bounce them and use them in a different track. Hmm. So we've done that here. We've taken uh, a break from something we've made earlier, which we will go through separately. Separately. But I'll just take you through the layers now. So we've got this wide break. Preferably without the echo. Yeah. And also to, to not come across as bitter, we are going to talk over some sections of this and not give you too much because uh, obviously this audio is going to be available across the internet. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. Um, we have, so on this, I try and remember our processing thoughts whilst going through this one. I won't go too de detailed on each sound because there's a yeah. lot. Um, we've got the split stereo thing going on again to give it a really nice whip to this particular break. We've chopped it up. What we like to do, especially with the, with the shuffles here, is move them ever so slightly off grid. Um, I'm sure a lot of people do this as well, but it just gives it a really more, really nice organic feel. Um, so it's more natural more rather natural, than just like yeah. It's more sleep. of a sort of syncopated shuffle rather than a lot of drum bass tracks. So it's just like you have the shuffle, but it's on the grid and everything's very gridded. Um, Yeah. Go to the kick. Oh no, we'll do the drums because these this has got the the beefy layers. And this is uh, the break that we previously made. Um, this, this is one we'll we'll go through in depth in a little bit. Yeah, and we'll show you after uh, once we've gone through all of these layers. But this is the one that we had made for. It was for a different track. It was for a different track, yeah. yeah. But and it then never we, went anywhere. Yeah, and then we took the break out, worked on it further, then never used it, then brought it in on this track. Yeah. And then we'll... sometimes that's all you need um, for whatever track we were working on. That was, I guess that was sufficient, but yeah. I felt for this track it needed more. 
So we've got more top layers here. Very, um, again, with the... It's taking them slightly off grid, making them a little bit, feel a little bit more natural rather than like so perfect. Got some hats. More hats. More hats. Ride. And where we source our samples from are mainly from Splice. Um, bloody love Splice. Um, I think one of the best things about Splice as well, as opposed to like sort of buying sample packs and of, instead of going for the sort of buy that one pack, you've got that one pack and that's that batch of samples and you use Splice and obviously you pay monthly for it. Yeah. But the beneficial thing about that is when you're looking for a hat, you don't find yourself limited to just the drum and bass sample packs, hi hats, and yeah, you end up finding course, things yeah. that might have been I mean, we, created for something else. We really steer clear of all drum and bass packs. You find yourself using more obscure and strange and weird sounds and, and making them making them your own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And incorporating them into a style of music they weren't necessarily written for or or even in the right tempo for. So yeah, we tend to we tend to go through sounds quite vigorously until we find some we come across something that we really like um and that minimizes having to eq the crap out of the snare yeah it's always better example. to find instead of it process something that sounds hours, better as source so yeah think, instead of spending hours processing a snare it's always better to spend hours finding a better snare yeah. or the right snare yeah um as there aren't there's no such thing as a better snare um i think um synthesizing drums is also something that we've been looking into at the moment as well we're just getting to grips with that um but th that has proven to be really good recently mm. um but we didn't do it for this track so i'm not going to go in, de <laughs> in detail with that um so, yeah. we'll talk sorry <laughs> let's so we talk about the process the of the drums yeah. and then we'll talk about in fact actually should it not make more sense to talk about the limbo break first we'll go over what we yeah, created right, the break with so I'm going to quickly open this project. So here. Limbo Drums. So this is the project where we made uh, made the drums and then we've, we've just taken the drums out of that project and put them in here to show you all the separate layers. So these, this is Limbo Drums. Let's start with the kick. I think this is, I don't know where this is from. Splice again. <laughs> splice, definitely splice. Um, let's have a look at the EQ. Very minimal. Oh, nothing, nothing on, on that, that one at all. Yeah. <laughs> and very minimal EQing. Again, you find the right kick. You don't need to do as much processing. Yeah, just a little bit there. Obviously, it was crashing with something. Or just to get the tone that you want. Um, a snare. Uh, what we used you to do in the track, that's we what. we used to layer a hell of a lot of snares and just keep like layering. Eight, just nine, like, oh, it's missing snares, that bit. Yeah. Oh, it's missing a certain tone in the snare. So we just kept adding layers. But I think recent we recently we found that just um, keeping it to a bare minimum and just finding the best samples and just making them sound as best as it possibly can. Absolutely. Without just adding loads because it just ends up becoming messy and things start phasing with each other. Um, well, this is obviously from a dub physics pack, this now. <laughs> we don't ever use any <laughs> drum bass samples. <laughs> I have to say, dub physics pack is very good. Yeah, there's a lot of, a a lot nice of great little, kicks in there as well. Nice little snare there. We've got some saturation on there from the Saturn. Um, just on the top end, um, some clinical EQ yeah, there. Yeah, very clinical <laughs> EQ in there. Just to get rid of some tones here. The Fab Filter stuff is our go-to stuff. Yeah. Um, in I think in every sense, like uh, for the compression. we've not really been EQ. using VSTs for long, because Reason obviously only introduced them, what, two or three years ago? <laughs> if that, yeah. So we've been... It's all very new territory um, it is. for us, but we are enjoying it thoroughly, because there's a lot of new toys we get to play with. Yeah. Just like a little top clap thing. What's it doing here? I literally just like just for the fizz. Just for the top. And speaking of fizz, there's something that one day I came around to yours and you had worked on a drum break and you'd showed me it and I was like, what is that really fizzy well, we've got staticky it here. noise? We've yeah. Got it in here. We'll go through it. And, and this was this changed everything, like in, in regards to 
taking like little bits of white noise and just adding that fizz over the top of your tops or your snares. Um, it's brilliant. It's another snare, which also has a shuffle. Um, what I tend to do with, with shuffles, so sometimes you can make the shuffle using the exact same sound, but it then sounds really robotic. So what I've done here is I've <coughs> kind of elongated or time stretched that snare for the first shuffle hit and then for the second shuffle hit it's much shorter and sometimes I'll pitch it up or down and then it will give it that kind of different levels different, as well different feel different, like, like a, almost a natural drummer if a natural drummer was playing it um, got a transient shaper here boosted so this transient shapers are really important I find now we never used to use them but they they make no. a really big difference on on um like the the sharpness of the snare, the slap, the fundamental um, hit that comes through, and then this the clap again, done the same thing with the shuffles. And that just kind of layers with that of the snare nicely. Um, and the static at the top as well. Got a shuffle. What I think, what we like to do as well. This is this is from another break that we made a while ago, and then you put the break in, and then you chop, chop it up, and like. I think what we've done here is faded it so it's really short and snappy. Um, chop it up into six deeps, and then again slightly move each second sixteenth off grid, so it gives it really nice shuffle. Again, we're here, done the same thing. And that kind of fills the top, the top layer of that, and that fills the, the kind of mid-range, mid-high range section around here. Static! I use this a lot. Um, yeah, this is the thing I was talking about, we, that real fizzy. We find nice static sounds, just like, and then just loop it. So I think this was originally, let's have a look at the original sample. Right, so this is the, that's the full sound. <laughs> <laughs> so we just took a section of that and just looped it. So yeah, that just gives it a really nice, like, overall crispy layer on the top end. We've used the, um, the fab pit satin to kind of bring out that top top end to really destroy the sound kind of distort it a little bit but not too much because it really nice crisp i don't know if you can hear but it really does make a big difference it makes everything sound like it makes the snare sound crispy it makes the hat sound crispier. It complements everything that's yeah. in, like in, involved in the. It's almost the like putting a pad in a section of a track to kind of fill out that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, should so, we talk about the overall drum processing in the um, in the actual track, in the actual track? Yeah, right, let's think... go back to abandon. Uh, I think we've covered most things there. Um, all right, so let's talk about the. Um, parallel processing so if we solo all of the drums right so um, yeah with the drums we like to put a little bit of parallel processing on it uh, in this case just heavy compression a bit of distortion and that's literally it um, you might already know, but it's the parallel really brings out the. I think we we probably said it in our last. In our last um, instalment of tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we uh, broke down Stratford Rhythm. Yeah, I mean in, in that in, in that track, I think it was just very bare bones basics parallel compression. So we we bust all our drums. Um, yeah. Some people like to do sort of drum uh, kick buses, snare buses, and the tops. Yeah. We do that from time to time, but more often than not, we kind of just bust everything. We we mix it and process our 
uh, drums individually to the point where we think they sound great yeah. then the parallel for us isn't about making them sound as good as possible it's more just beefing them up and making them just and kind it, of and it really overall some, some just hit harder a little really it makes a massive difference yeah 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 it yeah. absolutely does and all that is is just creating a parallel channel and what we tend to use is pulverizer because not only is it a compressor it's quite a gritty compressor and also you can there's a bit of dirt you can add to it yeah, as well there's nice filtering on it um, there are some things like some plugins you can't use uh, because it'll phase. Yeah, um, not sure why. <laughs> there is a there is obviously a good reason for it, but I'm not so clued up on that. Yeah, we're yeah we're not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> Let you Google that one. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I guess we just use our ears. That's a good point. We just use our ears. Mm. A lot of the time, rather than our technical know-how, and, I mean, and we do have a fair share of it, but we we rely on our ears so much more than that. Yeah, and also relying on out of studio experiences as well. So we have the the opportunity to bounce tunes here and there and play them out in a club. And I think ninety nine percent of the time we listen to that tune and we go, something needs to be changed. It's never the piano needs to be louder or the yeah. vocal needs to be quieter. It's always the drums need a little bit yeah. more punch or the that drums. snare's a little yeah. bit too loud. It's always in the drum department where the, the sort of the the punch is either too much or not enough. And that's where you then come back and you're using your ears just not necessarily always in the studio and you listen to it on the car stereo yeah. or out at the club when you get a chance to play your tunes and things like that. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's it's not always it's not as scientific. It's more just like if you think it sounds good, then, then yeah. you, you're in the right spot. You're in the right place. I mean, a bit of technical know-how is is good, I guess, to kind of get to get a better understanding of why you do these things. But, Absolutely, yeah. But you've got to trust your ears. Like if something's not technically right, but it sounds good, then it sounds good. Exactly. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've gone through every element within the track. We've gone through most elements. Yeah, yeah and we've gone through the structure as well. Adding fills is uh, another very important thing that we like to do. Um, a lot of people just change little bits here and there, don't they? Within they the just, pattern. Within the pattern, but we like to... Take things out, make things I mean, sort of a little I more prominent. I think we don't change even... things in the patterns enough, to be honest, but what we do like to do is go really in-depth with, like a fill at the end of every 16 or the end of every eight bars. But this was you done using uh, a thing called synchronous synchronous, which Where is in the is all it? drums, all drums. So this thing is amazing. Um, again, I think it's reason only. It is. Um, yeah. But it has an amazing it's sort of like it's got three different it's, it's LFOs. All, yeah, it's an LFO sequencer. So essentially, yeah. it's a sequencer that runs based on how long you, like, what sort of you dial in, what settings you dial in. And then you have all these LFOs that you can draw and then obviously assign those LFOs to automate certain things like distortion, filter, delay. Yeah, um, and reverb. Yeah, and like the resonance of the filter, all sorts of things like this. And you can get these so it's, wild, it's wild, <laughs> wild, crazy effects. It's literally like... If you've got a serum or something, you can assign um, different envelopes to a parameter. Yeah. It's like essentially the, the same thing here, but you've just got you've more got three, detail. You've got three LFOs, and then and they run as a step you select them so. and you add the, add the respective colors to the yeah. parameters. Um, uh, so if we play what the, what the drums sound like on their own and then lead in, you can see the step sequence and you can see the the uh, the way the uh, the uh, envelopes yeah so this is step it's moves running the all the time but we've yeah. just uh, we've just changed uh, I made the dry wet here yeah so. it gives it a really nice kind of glitchy robotic effect yeah uh, we like to use that a lot. And then there's some fills. Couldn't tell you where that was from. A few little effects. Probably spa, spa, spa lice. Crushes. What have you? Yeah, and we're. That's uh, it. We've. I think we've covered the entirety of the track. Yeah, we've <laughs> covered. We've covered as many elements as possible. I think we've covered every element. 
Um, maybe not so in depth, but um, but yeah, I think we like to keep we like to we like to put a lot of things in our tracks and then take them out until we've got some, all the sounds are really good, and then we'll use we'll recycle the same sounds, um, but in a different way. Yeah, or variety. reuse the same sort of chord progressions, but with different sounds or different notations. Yeah, with the same sound, etc. Yeah, and that's how we build variation. That's how we keep it interesting. And that's how we built up this track, Abandon. Abandon. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much.